Well, thanks so much for having me. I made myself a couple of notes. I usually don't have notes, but I made myself a couple of notes. And it is uh, always historic when you're here. You know, yesterday you went through a really, really, really tragic and tough time. Not only did we have loss of life, but I'm sure that it terrified you in many ways, your families. And so for that, I can't express enough sorrow and enough prayers. But let me say this. Unfortunately, and fortunately, in this world, we have to move on. That's what we do. We move on. The only shot that really seems to always matter is the next shot. And so that's what we do. Now, let me tell you from the bottom of my heart, I welcome you to West Virginia. It's an incredible place. A lot of times, we end up being thought of as dead last, but we're on the move. This place abounds with incredible seasons and natural resources and proximity to population and everything, and the chances for us are unbelievable. And with what you're doing, and what you're doing, and what our president is doing, and our vice president is doing, is absolutely propelling us beyond belief. And I thank you so much for all West Virginians. Now let me tell you this. I do believe the good Lord gave us the, the ability to smile and to laugh. And so I'm going to make you laugh a little. I'm going to tell you a couple stories. One is I can never, ever tell you how much I appreciate the President of the United States. He just called me. He's a personal friend. He just called me. We talked 20 minutes with me sitting out here in the parking lot. Now, and we talked about everything under the sun. Now, but just think about this just for a second. What an incredible, unbelievable job he did a you know, the night before last. Unbelievable. I told, I told our vice president, unbelievable, back double, triple, unbelievable. And he said, I've got to remember that. What was that? I said, back, double, triple. Now, but the other thing he did is he did something for me. He did something for me that will stay with me forever, ingrained in my mind forever. And Fox News did it as well with their television cameras as they zoomed in on Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Not only was she squirming all over the seat, but I know this feeling. She had to have an entire Tootsie Roll stuffed in her mouth, and her teeth were clammed up together. I've been there. But nevertheless, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment for me. <laughs> now, I know our president wants everybody in our country to love him. But I would say to our president, Donald, note to self, that woman does not like you. <laughs> Now, there's a lot of similarities between Donald Trump and myself in, from a West Virginian's eyes. And I wrote them down real quick, but we, we're new to politics. We're both businessmen. We both have some wealth. He has a lot. I have a little, teeny bit. We're both outspoken. We're both really impatient. We both inherited what I would call from our predecessors a dog's mess. Now, you and he have turned it around, and you're going somewhere. And I think, with your help, maybe I and a lot of others are turning it around in West Virginia as well. Now, we're both tall. He's got a lot better hair. You know, we both have great kids and wives. We ran for the right reason. We don't want anything for ourselves. And by the way, his son, Don Jr., my son, Jim Jr., both born on January 1st. So, a lot of similarities at least a few, but, uh, but he's doing great work. I'll end by saying this real quickly. I love you for all you're doing. You have given us so much. You've given us tax relief. You've given us so many different things that you're taking on the challenges that are unbelievable. But you've given us one thing that is unbelievable, and that is hope. You've turned the nation around with hope. Now, Ronald Reagan gave us a lot of things, 
But in my opinion, the number one gift that he gave us is he made Americans feel better about being Americans. Now, I'll leave you with this. Now, I've been away from the Greenbrier, not completely, but my daughter's running it and I've been a little bit away. But you may wonder, what's it like to own the Greenbrier? You know, we did take it over on desperate times. My son walked around and would say, Dad, you bought this thing for $20.1 million? There's more artwork here than $20.1 million. And after it lost a million dollars a week for 38 consecutive weeks, <laughs> he walked around and he would say, I'm telling you one thing, this place sucks. <laughs> And I'll leave you with this thought, true again, because I only tell truths, true again, I'm standing getting a paper six months after I bought the Greenbrier, and right in front of me is the perfect image, the perfect image of the Greenbrier. A little teeny girl, four or five years old, in a beautiful little dress, just came from the main dining room, as true as it can be, and her dad's standing there, she's just bouncing off the wall, and he said, Go ahead, go ahead, who knows what she's going to do. And as I stepped forward, the beeper went off on my side. And that little girl screamed, watch out, Daddy, he's backing up. <laughs> so I leave you. I can't thank you enough. God bless you for everything. Thank you.